Sewage Treatment Basics. Uh, this is Kenneth R. Johnson, I'm giving a presentation on what I call Sewage Treatment Basics or Sewage Treatment 101. Managing sewage and water is actually a reasonably complex exercise, as you can see by this water and sewer plan of the city of Whitehorse. The water originates from the Riverdale Wells and the Schwatka Lake, and it goes into a system of pipe that's pumped throughout the city, up to Porter Creek Crestview, Granger Copper Ridge, and it's also stored in a series of water reservoirs. The sewage then is collected in a system of gravity sewers that ultimately feeds down to what you can see is the low point of the Maxwell Sewage Booster Station and it's pumped out to the Livingston Trail Environmental Control Sewage Lagoon. From there it's treated in the lagoon and ultimately discharges into the Yukon River. So you can see it's a fairly complex system that is used for the supply of water and the treatment of sewage. Question, what is sewage made of? And sewage is actually 99.9% .9 pure water, but it's this 0.1% of the material that is really a cause of concern from a variety of reasons. What is bad about sewage? I think the main one of the main things bad about it is its impact on the environment, which causes oxygen depletion, eutrophication, and toxicity. You'll notice the one drawing that has oxygen concentration versus distance down river from the discharge is that the oxygen is the sewage flows downstream, it'll in fact with the biodegradation will decrease the oxygen in the water ultimately causing problems for fish to breathe so to speak in the water. The other thing eutrophication which is the buildup of nutrients in in the water called algae blooms as you can see by the one photo in the lower right hand corner and the other issue is toxicity that some of the constituents such as ammonia are in fact directly toxic to fish. What else is bad about sewage? Public health. So there are a bunch of waterborne organisms which cause disease. Of course, the ones that we are quite commonly or commonly known to us are things like Giardia and Cryptosporidium, but there are of course a host of other organisms which can cause disease from sewage. The processes that are used to treat sewage, the, the initial ones are, are called preliminary and primary treatment. Preliminary treatment is really a coarse screen that removes what I call the bicycles and two by fours, which is really the removal of large solids by coarse screens. Primary treatment is the removal of solids, small solids by gravity or fine screens. So you'll see the photo in the lower, the bottom one is actually a, a gravity settling pond, but you can also use very fine screens to remove the solids as well for primary. Then there's secondary treatment, which best described as the removal of biodegradable components of sewage with air injection and mixing. And really what you're allowing to the, the bacteria, the bugs that are in the system, is you're giving them a, an environment where they can basically consume the, the nutrients or the biodegradable material in a sort of an ideal ideal conditions. So with, with air injection and with mixing, the bugs the, in the sewage consume the biodegradable material and what happens with this then is that you, you want to separate the, the bugs from the liquid after that and you put that in another sort of settling pond where gravity then separates the water from the, the solids. And then finally you've got tertiary treatment where you remove the nutrients with bacteria or chemicals. And this sketch in the lower portion is a series of tanks where you actually allow the bacteria to remove the components themselves. The last two major components of sewage treatment are disinfection and residuals management. So disinfection, you've still got some pathogens or some disease-causing organisms that are in the effluent that comes out of the secondary sewage. So what you want to try and do is put in some sort of oxidizing agent or some sort of system that kills the pathogens. And, and certainly the most common one that's used today is ultraviolet radiation. We're using a series of lamps or lights that create UV radiation that, that affects the DNA of these passages and ultimately kills them. There are alternate systems such as chlorine, which is no, not not commonly used anymore because chlorine actually is, is toxic to fish and you can also use ozonation, but again UV treatment is the most commonly used system. You can see a series of UV lamps which the sewage is passing through. The final general component of sewage treatment is residuals. So as I mentioned before, you're separating out solids from the liquid in the sewage at various stages in the sewage treatment process. So th this solids are actually a, a biodegradable material unto themselves. So of course that in, in itself it can be has contains pathogens and can be quite stinky. So what you want to do is you want to stabilize these solids and dispose of them once they've been removed by the sewage treatment. And there's a whole variety of processes you can do that. The photo in this slide shows the bagging of sewage solids in Pangnerton up in Nunavut. Lagoon systems work very much the same as 
the mechanical systems that the mechanical system that we just described and nature will provide complete sewage treatment but what you're doing is relying on sort of mother nature and the elements there to do the same sort of things so you put the sewage into a pond and you've got sunlight energy and wind that it provides the mixing and air that is required for the actual biodegradation that occurs normally in, in, in a mechanical system. So you can see you've got a sort of different zones within the lagoon system that, that occur with aerobic activity, anaerobic activity in the facultative, and then sort of a sludge layer at the bottom. And at the same point you, with the sunlight you've also got ultraviolet radiation that comes from the sunlight and will act as a disinfection a disinfectant to the pathogen organisms as well. So a lagoon system works quite well for sewage treatment, but it isn't certainly isn't as efficient as a mechanical system, so you require a much larger area of land for the lagoon to function. So with the lagoon systems, air aerated lagoon systems, you've got the preliminary, primary, secondary, tertiary, and disinfection. So in this slide here, we've got all the that were previously described with the mechanical system. So you've got the ponds in the upper left hand side or which are the primary the primary system where the solids are allowed to settle out and then if you look down you'll actually see air that's being bubbled into two series of lagoons and this is where you get the biodegradation where, you, where you're introducing air and you're mixing and you're allowing the biodegradable material to be consumed with the air and mixing and, and, and consumed so that you get rid of the biodegradable material. And then sort of the final cell it's, uh, that's on the right hand side of the photo you see so it's a sort of quiescent so it's allowing some settling and also allowing for sunlight to penetrate and provide some disinfection. And then from the, the discharge from lagoon such as this could include a UV system in addition just to the pond system you see on the right hand side. So, but going back to the mechanical system process basics, so we've got preliminary and primary. You see it coming into this sketch. So the raw sewage comes in, it goes through a series of screen screens, and it can be ground up after the larger solids so that once you, you can actually remove grit or some of the, the sand type of materials before it goes into the primary clarifier, which is on the right hand side. Then from the primary clarifier, it moves on to the secondary and tertiary treatment. So as we described before, there's an aeration tank, as we see at the top of that photo, an air compressor which puts air into the aeration tank, that so allows for air and mixing. And then from there it goes to a secondary clarifier which separates the sort of mixed material, the solids from the liquid, and the liquid exits the secondary clarifier. And then this, this biomass of these bugs are actually returned back into the system and turn back into the aeration tank because the idea there is you always want to keep some some level of bacteria going back into the system to to maintain an active biosolids or healthy biosolids and then of course from the elements there's a certain portion of the sludge that comes off the secondary clarifier that goes down and is treated and disposed of down as you see down at the bottom of the picture. And from there we again disinfection and residuals management. So disinfection we've, we've got a, a slightly different configuration but it's, it's basically the same. So the sewage is directed through a, a series of ultraviolet lamps as you can see from here and then it, so it goes through the ultraviolet lamps and the disinfection occurs and then of course lastly, last but not least is the residuals which are collected and have to be managed or stabilized and disposed of. And this is the overall system again just in its in the full sketch so you've got raw sewage coming in screens grinding get rid of grit left hand side then you've got your primary clarifier where you see some sludge going out the bottom of it and then the primary effluent going off to the aeration tank where air is introduced you get mixing and aeration where the biodegradation occurs. Then from the aeration tank it goes into the secondary clarifier where you get the separation of the solids and the liquids by gravity usually. And then the effluent off that goes, and is, goes into disinfection. Then you get the solids return from the activated sludge and a portion of that goes back to the aeration tank and another portion of that is taken away along with the raw and primary sludge and, and is stabilized and disposed of. So that's the end of this presentation.